Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman television. We'll start with the headlines. Brotherly relations and the latest development in the region were the main themes of discussions between His Excellency, the Minister responsible for foreign affairs, and the Saudi higher apparent in New York. The second investment promotion forum discusses industrial integration projects and fulfilling local market needs. With a wide participation from owners of Omani camels, competition to the annual Camel Race Festival is concluded in Mulevi. Those are the headlines and now for the news in details. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on the occasion of the Kingdom's National Day. On the sidelines of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly meeting in New York, His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, Minister Responsible for Foreign Affairs, met with His Highness Prince Mohammed bin Nayef, higher parent of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. During the meeting, they discussed the brotherly relations between their countries and the current developments in Syria and Yemen. Bin Alawi also met his Canadian counterpart, His Excellency Stephen Dion, and reviewed supporting cooperation correlation between the Sultanate and Canada and the latest development in the Middle East. Bin Alawi further took part in the GCC Foreign Minister's meeting at the British Mission Headquarters in New York with their American and British counterparts, where they discussed the latest situations in Syria, Yemen, and terrorism combat. Another meeting was later held with His Excellency Jean Marc, French Foreign Minister. Ministry of Commerce and Industry organized today in collaboration with Shadid, Iron and Steel, the second seminar on promoting the investment opportunities, which reviews 15 investment industrial and commercial opportunities offered by the company to the owners of small and medium enterprises. Under the auspices of His Excellency Dr. Ali bin Masoud Sinedi, Minister of Commerce and Industry. A number of working papers were presented by a number of government agencies, colleges, banks, financial institutions and private sector companies. The seminar organized bilateral meetings and open discussions between entrepreneurs and government and private entities participating in the seminar. A number of government and private agencies involved in project financing, a number of CEOs, in addition to 150 entrepreneurs participated in the seminar. The budget of Oman Development Bank ODB during the year 2016 amounted to around 94 million Omani reals to finance various economic projects as one of the solutions of the economic crisis due to the oil prices decrease. This came in a statement by Hamad bin Salam al Harthi, general manager of ODB. He added that through financing these projects, many job seekers will join the market and the projects will enhance some sectors to contribute in the gross domestic product. Omani product quality and adding innovative ideas in manufacturing Omani products topped the discussions of the economic event made in Oman. Such an event is the first for the Public Authority for Investment Promotion and Export Development, Ithra, which aimed to enhance the industrial sector in the Sultanate. More than 100 academic students, entrepreneurs and representatives of public and private sectors participated in the event. It discussed linking the higher education graduates with the local market and encouraging them to join the industrial field. It also aimed to find suitable environment for foreign investment in the Sultanate, to increase Sultanate's ability to encourage local investment and to attract foreign investment. And still to come in our news bulletin. Rapid advances in technology made banking services in Myanmar easier.
Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. A hill in Palestinian territory has been embroiled in a drama which took on international importance because of concerns over Israeli settlement expansion in the West Bank, occupied by Israel since 1967. More details in the following report. The Israeli settlement of Amona in the occupied West Bank. Around 40 families live here, mostly in caravan homes, but maybe not for long. The Israeli High Court has ruled the settlement is on Palestinian property and must be evacuated by December 25th, a move contested by some Israelis, particularly Amona settlers. We are not going anywhere from here. This is our home. Not the Israeli Supreme Court will get us out of here, and no one else. The Israeli Defense Minister has said the order to evacuate Amona must be obeyed, but without specifying how that will be done. One of the solutions proposed by a governmental committee is to move the settlement close by, an option that has Fuad Mahdi up in arms. This Palestinian says part of the land being considered as a new location for Amona belongs to his family. He says he's been unable to access it since the nearby Israeli settlements were built. This land is our land, the land of our ancestors, which we inherited from our parents and grandparents. For us, land has great value. When I heard on the radio that they were going to take my land, I cried in grief. It was as if one of my children had died. All Israeli settlements in the West Bank are seen as illegal under international law, though Israel differentiates between those it has approved and those it has not. But even unapproved settlements, like Amona, have sometimes been retroactively legalized. Rights groups now worry the Israeli government will try to find a loophole to bypass the court ruling. The Israeli government, under the pressure of the settlers and the extreme right wing, is trying to find all sorts of strange and, in our opinion, illegal solutions that they won't really have to evacuate. More than 370,000 Israeli settlers live across the West Bank, occupied by Israel since 1967. And the Jewish state's ongoing construction of settlements has long been seen as a major stumbling block in the resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, now spanning almost seven decades. More than 225,000 citizens are working in the private sector until the end of July 2016, according to statistics issued by the Ministry of Manpower. The statistics also showed that 172,000 Armani Manpower are working in top-grade private sector establishments, while expatriate manpower working in top private sector establishments reached more than 550,000. Private sector establishments with international standards came second in attracting and hiring national manpower, where the numbers reached more than 8,000. These numbers uh, indicate the increase in the monetization rate in the private sector. The number of private sector establishments under fourth grade reached more than 157,000 establishments, and the number of establishments under the third grade reached more than 19,000, a number of first grade establishments reached more than 5,000. The National Center for Statistics and Information revealed that more than 700,000 male and female students are on classes at a ratio of 11 to each teacher and 26 students to every class. The index reveals high quality of education in various private and public educational institutions. It is about the density of students in the schools. The number of students in government schools reached more than 540,000, while in private sector they reached more than 100,000. The number of students in the international schools reached around 60,000 students. With wide participation from the owners of thoroughbred Omani camels and among an attendance of camel breeders and people interested in camel races, the competitions of the 14th Public Camel Race Annual Festival 2016-2017 were concluded today. The event is organized by the Royal Court Affairs, represented by the Royal Camel Corps at Al Abiyad Field for Camel Race in the Wilaya of Mulebi in the Governorate of North Sharqiyya. Indian Embassy and Oman Chamber of Commerce and Industry organized a business meeting in the presence of His Excellency Mohsen bin Darwish, advisor of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and the Indian Ambassador. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed al -Rubai. 
With the aim of increasing further bilateral trade and investment, a business-to-business -business meetings are held between representatives of various significant organizations from India, such as health, foods, marketing, jewelry and training, together with their counterparts from Oman's various organizations. This meeting was held at the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, one of a good platform for both sides' organization to find out the right opportunities available in both both countries. During the opening session, the authorities of both countries commented on the importance of having such meetings, which is well realized to be one of the effective tools to enhance the existing warm economic and trade relations, and this interaction here with the business community highlight the interest of both sides to further develop the economic relations between Oman and India. There are quite uh, immense uh, uh, opportunities are there uh, uh, in various sectors, in Oman and in India, of course. Uh, uh, hopefully during the uh, B2B uh, sessions and meeting where uh, both delegations will, uh, will, will have with their counterparts in Oman. And hopefully this will really result with uh, uh, fruitful uh, outcomes for both parties. Uh, I do really encourage the Indian businessman not, look, not to look into exporting only actually to Oman but investing also in Oman not only for the local market by the neighboring market and other regional market actually. According to the officials in the OCCI, the Indo-Omani ties are distinguished with its character of the typical historic relations. The economic and trade cooperation is one of the best options to boost those relations. During the previous period, the trade exchanges between Oman and India and the joint investment volume have increased considerably. Oman Fertilizers Factory is a significant example for success of Oman Indian Joint Venture. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rubi'i, Sultanate of Oman Television. Transferring money has long been a pricey and time consuming business in Myanmar. Now the country's new civilian government is banking on a shortcut mobile money. Here is a report. The Kin Mint U, sending money home to rural Myanmar, used to involve long walks or bicycle rides to the nearest bank. Now it's as easy as sending a text. She recently began using a mobile money service, which lets her deposit and send cash from her phone via an app or at small shops like this one. The advantage is that it now takes very little time to transfer the money. The process will be finished in 10 or 15 minutes, and then the children reply to me that they have received it. Like 90% of the population, Kin Mientu doesn't have a bank account. But even for those that do, using them can be tricky. ATMs are few and far between, and residents of this suburb near Yangon have to take a boat to reach their closest branch. Myanmar's banking sector withered during decades of military dictatorship, and many people still prefer to store their savings under the proverbial mattress or convert them into gold or gemstones. Building customer trust is going to be the biggest issue here, to my mind. Um, I think there isn't a lot of trust in the financial sector, given the history of demonetization and bank runs and so on. So, you know, the average consumer <coughs> um, generally will, will, will feel probably more comfortable keeping their money at home rather than keeping it actually in a bank. These new banking services have only been made possible by rapid advances in technology. In just a few years, smartphones have become commonplace throughout Myanmar, and some consumers could bypass bricks and mortar banks entirely. When this service becomes more popular, it will be much more helpful than the banks, because it will allow people to save and withdraw money at any time. Banks are only able to do this during office hours. Mobile banking was only given the go-ahead by the government in April, so for now uptake is still quite slow. But with Myanmar's economy growing at around 8% a year, more and more people are likely to need ways to store and send cash. And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Partly cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of Dhufar with chances of intermittent drizzle. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with cloud accumulation and scattered rainfall over the Hajar Mountains. Winds will be easterly to northeasterly light to moderate over the coast of the Sea of Oman, while on the rest of the coast it will be southeasterly south to southerly light to moderate. 
Seas will be moderate along the coast of the Arabian Sea with a maximum wave height of 2.5 meters and slight along the coast of the Sea of Oman with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Brotherly relations and the latest development in the region were the main themes of discussion between His Excellency the Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs and the Saudi higher apparent in New York. The second investment promotion forum discusses industrial integration projects and fulfilling local market needs. And with wide participation from owners of Armani Camels, competitions of the annual Camel Race Festival is concluded in Mubaybi. With that, we come to an end to tonight's news bulletin from all of us here at the newsroom and the studios. Good night.